There's one power invisible, and you see it everywhere and every day. One power indescribable, but you speak of it with every word you say. Mysterious until you know the truth. As precious as a love inside of you. Call it God, call it Spirit, call it Jesus, call it Lord, call it Buddha, Baha'u'llah, Hashem, or Heaven's door. But whatever name you give it, it's all one power, can't you see? It's the power of love. And you and me, one power, one power. And you and Jersey, and when he 
he retired and started writing these books. Um, for instance, the title of one is um, How to Rescue the Bible from Fundamentalism. And, uh, uh, he had some pretty um, eye-opening, uh, some pretty uh, earth-shaking news to share uh, about God. And uh, the more I read, the more I thought, well, this sounds just like what we're studying at Unity every Sunday. So I had the opportunity one time to go to Memphis and hear him speak. He was speaking at a college there in this little bitty church that I had played music at before. Somehow I got him to, to come there while he was in town. And so I drove from Huntsville to Memphis and I'm listening to his talk. The place is packed. It's like standing room only. And he's describing to us the evolution of our consciousness around God. And it was so profound that I even cried a little bit because it was uh, so awe-inspiring to me to have this man who is not a new thought leader. He's a priest, for God's sake. And he's up there talking new thought language. And it really cemented it uh, one more time that what we're studying is universal. It's, it, it's, it's based on spiritual law, um, the idea that God is a presence and a power. So he's telling us that um, if you believe in evolution, there was a time where humans were not self-aware. Like we didn't realize that we were going to die, right? So like when I lived in this little uh, farmhouse in Alabama, I'd get up in the morning, there would be deer in the backyard. Or one time I was on my porch with my friend and an owl swooped by us. You know, it wasn't unusual for one of our cats to drag, you know, a rabbit or something onto, or a snake onto the porch. So there were coyotes in the woods that howl when the trains go by. So now I'm in, moved to Missouri, I'm in a suburb and I'm like, okay, there's no critters around here. And one day I'm walking out my apartment, uh, my condo, and there in the little patch of grass, there was a rabbit sitting there. And I was like, oh, well, what are you doing here, Mr. Rabbit? You know, in the middle of, like, the city. And so I went to work, and I came back, and I think it was a retreat day. <laughs> I worked in the retreat department, and so it was a long day. It was almost dark. And I'm walking back into my condo, and there's a rabbit. And he's still sitting there. And I thought, that rabbit's been sitting there all day long, I bet you. You know? And I bet he's not worried about how much money's in his checkbook or, or you know, he's fat or old or ugly or he's the wrong color rabbit or just a stupid rabbit, maybe. You know, he's just being a rabbit right there, right? And he seems to be really okay with it. And I thought, I'd like to be more like this rabbit. You know, just in the moment, not worried about anything. But, you know, he's not self-aware. He's not thinking, I'm getting older and I'm going to die one day. Maybe I need to go to the doctor. I've got this pain in my stomach. I don't know what it is, right? He's, none of that is going on with this rabbit. So, so John Shelby Spong tells us that there was a point in in the evolution of human consciousness where we were like the rabbit, but then we had this big shift and suddenly we became aware, oh, we're all growing older and we're dying. And it freaked us out so much that we had to invent God. Breathe that in. It's like we're under so much stress and so much tension, and we don't know what's going to happen when we die. Now, even nowadays, Lots of people tell you what's going to happen. You know, some people will tell you if you're not good, you're not going to like what happens after you die. Right? Some people say, "Oh, you just keep coming back. You know, you might come back as a rabbit next time. Who knows?" Right? But I don't think anybody really knows. We still have a little bit of that stress going on. But imagine what it would be like to have that stress without anybody there to tell you what was going to happen, or to say, "Oh, it's going to be okay because it's gone." care of you, right? Okay, so we made up God. It's like a coping mechanism. Right? Breathe. 
And what were the first ideas about God? Well, you had like thunder gods and lightning gods and water gods and sun gods. And, you know, we related to something that was bigger than us, that was out of our control, that we thought was very powerful. Well, that, this must be God, right? So we're going to start worshiping, you know, uh, these sun deities and water deities. I mean, think about if the rabbit suddenly became self-aware. Like, would he make up like this giant rabbit god? And then <laughs> on Sundays, you would go down with carrots and lay them on the <laughs> altar and stuff and make up little rabbit rituals to appease the giant god. I mean, really, think about it. You know, because what happens is, is that most of us are carrying our grandma's god around or our daddy's god around. You know, a lot of our thoughts about God are formed when we're little kids. And if you're not like a lot of us are and question this, you just keep doing things without really knowing why that you're doing it. Yes? And not just Christians, but Muslims, Christians, Jews. Do, do you know, does everybody know that the three major religions in the world can all be traced back to Abraham? They're called the Abrahamic uh, religions. So the father of the biggest religion in the world is Abraham in the Old Testament, right? Well, before Abraham came along and kind of during his time as well, people were divided up into little tribes. And they started releasing some of their um, thunder gods and lightning gods, and they started coming up with these warrior gods, right? My God will beat up your God. You know, if you look in the Old Testament and you take out of your mind the idea that Jehovah is the one true God, you can really see that in there. Because they all thought their God was the one true God. And so they're calling on their God to help them go beat up somebody and take all their stuff. Right? So everybody lived in these little tribal factions. Everybody had their own little God. The Israelites just happened to come up with Jehovah. Right? So then, as time progresses along, we begin to see in the Bible um, and in um, society the formation of monarchies. Right? So think about who are some of the biggest characters from the Old Testament. Saul. Solomon, David, what do they all have in common? They're kings. There's even a book in the Old Testament called Kings. Right? Okay. And so what happens if you don't do what the king says? Get your head cut off. <laughs> or something worse. Hung up on a stake. Hung up on a cross, maybe. Right? So we took this idea of like our Lord and Master, right? Because what do you call the king or the king's court? My Lord, my Lord, my lady, right? So this Lord, this king, this idea that you got to please this person and go, you know, offer them gifts and blessings and flattery, we took that and then we turned God into that, right? Because just like God created us, in God's image and likeness, we're creating God in our image and likeness, yes? And don't we put some of the most awful human characteristics on God? You know, God is a jealous God. God is a vengeful God, and God's going to get you if you don't do what God tells you to do, yeah? So then we have Jesus coming along in the New Testament, and he messed with everybody's mind. Right? Because he's like, forget about all that stuff that you think about God as like a king. God is my father. God is my father. God is part of my family. Right? This was a major difference in thinking at that time. Like he's coming to say, look, God is Abba. Right? Isn't that the Aramaic word that he used, Abba? And do you know what that means? It's like... A term of endearment. 
It's like Daddy or Papa. The Aramaic scholar Rocco Erto tells us that it's, it's a slang word that people who speak Aramaic use as, as a, um, to, to say that we're in an intimate relationship. It's like saying baby or honey, daddy, sweetie, papa. This is how Jesus thought of God, right? And he's telling us, forget about all this fighting stuff. Like, forgive people. You know, turn the other cheek. This is all about love and oneness and forgiveness. We're still working on all that, right? But at least it was a major shift in thinking about divinity. And so I believe, I heard Bishop Spahn say this, and I was like, yes, I believe it too. I believe that we're in a point of evolving human consciousness where we're about to take another big leap just like the people did from becoming um, unconscious to becoming self-conscious or self-aware, I think we're moving from being self-conscious to God-conscious and realizing that we are that. Like it ain't out there. It's in here. It's all around. It's everywhere. It's the ground of all being. The existentialist Paul Tillich says, the ground of all being. God, that's why I say it at the beginning of every service. God is life. God is love. God is the ground of all being. And how do we worship that God? How? Living fully, loving lavishly, and being all that we can be. That's the new way to worship. I think we're the new church, maybe. Who knows? All right, come on. So, does anybody remember, um, did you ever have a, have a computer that ran DOS? <laughs> My first computer was this little metal, I mean it was a heavy metal box. You could knock somebody out with that thing. And I, it didn't even have a hard drive. I had these five and a quarter floppy disks that you would put in and you'd load it, everybody shaking their head, right? And the internet wasn't even thought of. Yet, you know, I didn't even have a modem in it. And so you would stick it in there and you would type in all the commands, right? And then suddenly I was going to this little uh, community college. I went there um, to, on my first day of class and suddenly I was introduced to Windows. Ooh. They had a bunch of computers and they had Windows on it. Windows 3.1, and then we got the upgrade, right? Windows 3.11, right? And so instead of typing in all the commands, you just clicked on a picture, and it ran the program for you. Well, isn't that handy? Right? I don't have to do all that typing. I don't have to know any of these commands. I just simply click on them. What do they call it that you click on? An icon. It's an icon. Right? It's something that stands for something else. It's like an interface. It's an interface. Windows is an interface between you and what's really going on with your computer. Like any of you PC users out there, you open your computer up and you click on an icon and then you get the full circle, right? And you're like, okay, what's going on? It's not doing it. I clicked, and all I'm getting is this little circle. I know there's something going on in there somewhere. I don't know what it is, and I'm getting really frustrated and impatient. Isn't that somehow some, some kind of like our prayers, right? Okay, so I said, Reverend Dale, the right affirmation. I did my releasing and forgiveness work. Hey, I've even got a vision board with pictures of what I want, and nothing is happening. That little circle seems to be going around. I feel like something's going on, but I'm not getting any results, and I'm getting frustrated. This stuff doesn't work, right? <laughs> so the, the thing is, it doesn't matter what the picture is, right, between you and, and the code, right? It could be any, you can, you know, you can make your own icon. You can put whatever you want on it. And that's the way it is with God. See, 
God can be Father, now, or Abba, in unity, we come to unity, and sometimes we hear people say Father, Mother, God, because we want to know, we want everyone to know that, you know, equal time, you know, everybody's equal, Father, Mother, God, but that still doesn't get it. Who really wants to call God it? Anyway, if you look in the Old Testament, where it says Elohim, that's plural. So you could say they, or even better, we. How about that? You know? So God doesn't care what you call it as long as you call it, right? So I really believe that each and every one of us has our own special individual little doorway to God, our own way of relating to God because this thing, this, that's what they call it in religious science. If you ever read that book, Science of Mind, the very first chapter, do you know what it's called? The thing itself. The thing itself. So this thing that is God, it is love. Like when I came to some of my first New Thought classes and somebody said, God is not a person. I thought my head was going to explode. I was like, what? And I already had some success with this person. I thought that God was. And then they said, no, oh, God is a presence. God, God is not even a presence. God is presence. God is power. Ooh, I don't know about this. But this presence, this power, that is wisdom and unconditional love doesn't give a rip how you relate to it as long as you relate to it because you were created to be in relationship with it and to realize that you're expressing as it. That's the whole point of being here is to be in relation with this great mystery and to express as this creative power in the world. So, so call your father, call your mother, call your father God, mother God, call your whatever it is. Just call it, so whatever name you give it. It's all one power, can you see? It's the power of the love in you and me. So let's turn within one more time. Let's go to headquarters. <laughs> Charles Fillmore told us, go to headquarters. And just be still for a moment. This is the way that we interface. We go past the icon to the code. The code of the universe that is written as us. That is working within us, within our heart and mind right now. In this moment. Opening our heart and our mind to a new awareness. A new understanding. A new relationship. So we give thanks for this power and this presence. We give thanks that we are evolving and growing, gaining a wider understanding of, of the universe and our place in it. And so we pray this this morning in the nature of our way shower, Jesus the Christ, and in the consciousness of all those way showers that have come to show yeah. us the way to enlightenment, to higher consciousness. And so we just let go and trust and allow that to be in charge, the great I Am. We allow this I Amness to be in charge. We know that perfect results, perfect evolution is unfolding right here in this place right now this morning. And because we let it be so, so it is. Amen. Last night I dreamed that I was a child 
out where the pines grow, wild and tall. I was trying to make it home through the Before the darkness falls, I heard the wind rustling through the trees, and ghostly voices rose from the fields. I ran with my heart. Down that broken path with the devil snapping at my heels. I broke through the trees there in the night. My father's house stood shining hard and bright. The branches and brambles tore my clothes and scratched my arms. But I ran till I fell, shaking in his arms. The hard things that have pulled us apart will never again, sir, tear us from each other's heart. I got dressed into that house I did ride. From now on the road, I see his windows shine. Walked up the stairs, stood on the porch. A woman I didn't recognize came and spoke to me through a screen door. I told her my story and who I'd come for. She said, I'm sorry, but son, no one by that name lives here. shines hard and bright it stands like a beacon calling me in the night calling and calling so cold and alone shining across this dark highway where our mistakes lie
If you're watching us on Facebook, you can even give on our website, EntitySavannah.org. And uh, this morning, because the service is being led by all men, thank you guys, um, is there a man in the congregation that would like to volunteer to pray over the love offering and lead us in our prosperity affirmation? Any man, and I'm going to stand up here until someone goes for Josh! Give it up, Josh! Thank you, Josh. Let us pray. Let us pray. God, we pray that you bless all the offerings that are offered to this church and to this loving family. Uh, that way we that we may continue to be prosperous and share the love and truth that you are with the world. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Amen. And so our prosperity affirmation. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have and all that I give and all that I receive. I am grateful. God is my source. God is my power. God is me everything I need. So I give thanks for all my blessings. God is me everything I need. God is my source. God is my power. God is me. God is the 